Discover the Packers' secret plans for the upcoming NFL season. What's in store for the Green Bay Packers' offense in 2024? With the draft approaching, crucial questions arise. What will the key position Bates be? The hunt for a new quarterback intensifies even with Jordan Love's rise. Additionally, the battle for RB2 is about to begin. And let's not forget the essential H-back position, which lacks a successor. With so many choices in the draft, what will be the priority? Receiver depth could bring surprises. Are the Packers ready to make big offensive moves? Leave your like and comment. Subscribe so you don't miss any action this exciting Packers season. The Green Bay Packers offense was operating as one of the best in football late last season, sparking a playoff run in December. Jordan loved playing at an elite level, a strong running game, a diverse set of receiver skills, and a robust offensive line contributed to the Packers' late season performance. Looking ahead to 2024, expectations will be high for this unit, but like every team at this time of year, there are doubts. Here's the big question each of the Packers' offensive position groups faces with the NFL draft on the horizon. Will the Packers add a quarterback? The Packers, will they sign Jordan Love to a lucrative extension this offseason? And according to all reports, the team is very happy with how Sean Clifford handled backup quarterback responsibilities last season. However, the quarterback position is still on Brian Gutekunst's mind heading into the NFL draft. I would love to continue to bring quarterbacks in, said Gutekunst via Packer Central, not just for competition, but for their development, because I think it takes time. It takes time, any player, but a quarterback especially to get in a comfort zone of what they're doing, where you can really see their talent manifest itself. I think Sean hit it pretty early compared to most, but I think it's important to give the player time to get there. As detailed in a recent article, this desire to add competition and another developmental player to the roster is more of an organizational philosophy the Packers have, one we've seen in play over the years, than they felt they had to find an upgrade over Clifford. So, while the Packers remain excited about Clifford, adding a quarterback on day three seems like a choice that will happen, especially with Gutekunst having a surplus of picks. With Kurt Bankard in 2021, Danny Edling in 2022, and Alex McGow in 2023, we've seen Gutekunst shake up the back end of that position group. Is RB2 on the list? The Packers have a solid base at running back with Josh Jacobs, but in today's NFL, having a reliable secondary option is a must. As the roster is currently constructed, A.J. Dillon and Emmanuel Wilson will compete for this role, but there are uncertainties. Dillon signed a league minimum deal from a salary cap perspective and leaves almost no dead money if released. He's coming off a season where he averaged just 3.4 yards per carry and is far from guaranteed. Wilson impressed during his limited action in 2023, but with such a small sample size, he remains relatively unknown. It's these uncertainties that could very well lead Gutekunst to draft a running back to compete with Dylan and Wilson and potentially do so as early as day two. Is filling the H-back role a priority? The Packers have Luke Musgrave and Tucker Kraft providing playmaking abilities for the offense in their own way. Green Bay also has Ben Sims to fill the primary blocking role at tight end and Tyler Davis to potentially compete with him for that role this summer. But what the Packers don't have at this position right now, or at least isn't established, is the H-back role with Josiah DeGara now in Jacksonville. While the H-back hasn't seen many snaps, he plays a role in Loeffler's offense. This player needs to impact both running and passing games and is a cog in what Loeffler calls illusion of complexity, 
In short, this element keeps defenses off balance and guessing, running a variety of plays from just a few formations, and having concepts built off each other throughout the game, creating similar plays or plays that start the same but end up quite different. To do this effectively, versatility is required, and the H-back provides that. It's possible this player is already on the roster with Henry Pearson, or I wonder if the Packers will give Davis the chance to earn those snaps with his athleticism and blocking experience. To reinforce competition, the Packers could also turn to the draft. Kansas State's Ben Sinnott would be an excellent option and bring some energy to that specific position. Is the WR depth in this draft class too good to ignore? If there's one position where you can say the Packers are set, it's at wide receiver. In fact, you could say the Packers are more than set. But that being said, this is an absolutely loaded draft class, with nearly 25% of the top 100 players on PFF's big board being receivers. With five picks in the first three rounds, Gutekunst has the flexibility to address less urgent needs due to the number of selections at his disposal. Additionally, we all know how Gutekunst prioritizes taking the best player available when he can. And with how good this receiver class is, it's likely that when the Packers are on the clock, one of the top players on their board will be from this position group. Competition was key to this group's development last season, and if there's an opportunity to add something to that, Gutekunst shouldn't shy away. As I wrote recently, adding another vertical presence to this offense could end up being quite valuable. Is the offensive line the Packers' first-round pick? I mean, the recipe for it is absolutely there. It's a standout position and prioritized by the Packers. Just like receiver, this is an excellent draft class. On Daniel Jeremier's big board, seven of his top 22 players are tackles, which could mean the best player on the board when the Packers are picking plays at this position. The Packers also have a need here. Competition is likely needed for Rasheed Walker at left tackle, not to mention the Packers need a reliable swing tackle they can count on to come off the bench. I'm sure the hope is that Luke Tenuta or Caleb Jones can be that player, but relying on that happening is a risky play given their inexperience and lack of draft pedigree. Will the Packers draft three interior linemen? Understandably, safety and linebacker are getting a lot of attention, but this position group is empty right now. On the guard or center depth chart are Elton Jenkins, Josh Myers, Sean Ryan, and Royce Newman. That's it. There's no one to compete with Myers this summer. There's not even a backup on the roster who isn't already starting somewhere else. Newman is a potential candidate, and like Walker, my guess is Ryan won't receive the starting job this summer, but instead will have to earn it. Offensive coordinator Adam Stenovich said he needs to become much more consistent in pass protection. For a unit where competition was the foundation for improving their play last season, there's hardly anyone on the roster as a guard or center right now. With 11 picks in the draft, selecting only three interior linemen is in play. The Green Bay Packers are planning a major shift in their offensive line for the upcoming season. Zach Tom, acclaimed as one of the league's top right tackles, may be moving to a new standout position. Find out what this means for the Packers. Future in today's video, leave your comment on this strategic move, subscribe for more exclusive news, and don't forget to leave your like. Expectations are high for the Green Bay Packers as they approach the 2020 for NFL draft and strategize to strengthen their offensive formation. Intriguing news recently surfaced suggesting that Zach Tom, known for his exceptional performance as a right tackle, may be the future Hall of Fame center for the team, according to an ESPN report by Rob Domofsky. The information, shared during the Wild and Taos show, reveals an optimistic view of Tom within the Packers organization. According to Domofsky, some believe Tom has the potential to become a Pro Bowl right tackle, an all-pro guard, and even a future Hall of Fame center. 
This direct quote from someone within the Packers building raises fascinating questions about the team's offensive line future. Zach Tom, at 25, had an impressive season as a right tackle last year, playing over 1,000 snaps with just two sacks allowed in pass blocking. His versatility is notable, having played multiple positions along the offensive line since his rookie debut. This ability to adapt to the team's needs provides the Packers with valuable flexibility to shape their formation for the upcoming season. Tom's potential full-time move to center raises some important considerations. If this transition occurs, Josh Myers could be shifted to guard, competing with Sean Ryan for the position. Additionally, the Packers will likely explore their options in the 2020 for draft with multiple picks within the top 100 in search of a new starting right tackle. However, there are inherent risks to this strategic change. Moving such a talented player like Tom to a key position like center implies significant adjustments to the offensive line's dynamics. The decision also raises the question of whether a Hall of Fame caliber center is more valuable than a Pro Bowl right tackle. Tom's story at Wake Forest, where he alternated between left tackle and center, highlights his adaptability and fundamental skills. The Packers selected Tom in the fourth round of the 2022 draft, demonstrating their confidence in the player's potential. As the Green Bay Packers move forward with this ambitious strategy, many questions remain unanswered. Will Zach Tom thrive as a center? Will the Packers successfully fill the right tackle position if Tom moves to center? These and other questions are at the center of discussions about the Packers' offensive line future. Stay tuned for more updates and exclusive analysis on this developing story. Leave your comment below about this surprising change, subscribe to receive all Packers news, and don't forget to leave your like to support the channel.